My name is Don Walsh. I'm a retired captain in the United States Navy. I'm also an oceanographer and an explorer. And I'm here to tell you about an exploration that I made almost one half century ago. To descend, we need to create negative buoyancy. That's the sound of our air tanks flooding the sea. Thrusters armed, vents secured, switching to underwater telephone. Before we descend, we need to know that if I'm incapacitated in any way, you need to bring the submersible back to the surface yourself. You're now a member of the crew, so keep an eye out for anything weird, wonderful, or potentially dangerous. Depth 100 meters, heading 240 degrees. Life support systems are good. It's starting to really get dark out there. Now we're turning on the external lights. Comms check. Depth 200 meters. Heading 240 degrees. Life support systems are good. Entering the twilight zone. Only three people have been where we're going, and that's to the deepest place on our planet. In 1960, Jacques Picard and I were the first in our bathyscaphe Trieste. Our project was called Project Necton. Getting a ping on the sonar. Looks like we've got something coming our way. If the atmosphere here and our pressure hull is contaminated, we'll have to use an independent breathing system. You may be able to hear that. That scraping sound in the distance is seabed trawling. It's like clear cutting an entire forest to catch a couple of cows or to cut down the odd tree. Now, what does the term or word bathyscaphe mean? It's a very exotic sounding word, but in fact it comes from two Greek words, bathy meaning deep, and scaphos, ship, deep ship. This is a period of major destabilization for planet ocean. She is more acidic than she has been for at least 250 million years. Passing 1,000 meters, leaving the twilight zone and entering the midnight zone. These aquatic realms have absorbed 93% of the excess heat people have produced. Looks like a shark coming to check us out. It looks like a great white shark. Depth 1,340 meters. At this depth aboard the Trieste, a dribble of water started to enter our pressure hull inside our cabin. Now that's not a problem because the hull connectors where the wires and such pass through the wall, a very thick wall of our cabin, often leak at shallow depths. So what we did, we just count the number of drips for a period of time, say how many drips per minute. If that, in fact that count starts to increase with increased depth, then we've got a, a leaking problem and we have to abort the dive. In this case, we decided to continue in the hope that the increasing pressure would indeed seal the leak. Depth, 2,000 meters, heading 238 degrees. Life support systems are good. Depth, 2,200 meters. The pressure is now 200 times that at the surface. That's like 10 jumbo jets resting on your head. Necton's mission is to explore and research the deep ocean the beating heart of our planet. We need to understand its health, function, and resilience to support all life on Earth. Our discoveries will inform and catalyze legal, political, and economic policies to improve ocean stewardship by all mankind. Depth, 3,000 meters, heading 212 degrees. Life systems are still good. To relay simple messages to the surface, we use a basic system of tones, and we use a voice-modulated sonar. Basically, the data rate, as we say, is very slow, but we use certain codes so that we are clear on what we're trying to say, and that way we can maintain uh, good communications down to the greatest possible depths. The ocean is a powerful acoustic medium that fish and whales use for their own communications. Temperature, salinity, and pressure create channels called SOFAR that transmit sound thousands of miles through the deep ocean. 
Many so far are thought to be more or less permanent. Depth, 4,000 meters, heading 125 degrees. Life support systems remain good. We are now entering the abyssal zone. Don't be alarmed. That's the sound of the submersible structure starting to be squeezed by the pressure. We call it oil canning. And normally to offset that, we just turn up the volume on our underwater telephone and we can't hear these distracting noises. But it's all perfectly safe. Depth, 5,000 meters. Heading, 139 degrees. Life support systems are good. Jacques Picard was six foot seven inches tall, and our pressure hull was only six feet high and three feet wide. It was jammed with racks of instruments and controls. There was not much room left for me. Depth, 5,500 meters. Heading, 246 degrees. Life support systems are good. Altitude from seabed, 5,500 meters. We are halfway to full ocean depth. Depth, 6,000 meters, entering the Hadal zone. 6,000 meters is also an interesting number because if you can dive to 6,000 meters, just about half the maximum depth of the ocean, you can actually visit 98% of the area of the seafloor in the world ocean. There's some more plastic. As much as 12 million tons of plastic waste ends up in the ocean each year. Plastic can take a hundred years to degrade, so every piece of plastic that has not been recycled still exists. In fact, when Columbus saw the New World, if he had been drinking his morning coffee out of a foam cup, it would still probably exist in the ocean. Depth, 7,000 meters. Heading, 217 degrees. Life support systems are good. In the ocean, plastic photodegrades into smaller and smaller pieces called nurdles. They are swallowed by fish, and the nurdles soak up toxins that can be passed up the food chain to us. Many people wonder what we ate during our dives. On board the Trieste, our dives were long enough that we had to have something to eat uh, during the day or the hours we were submerged. So I brought along Hershey bars, and of course, Shock brought along Swiss candy bars from Nestle. We are now at 8,000 meters. At this depth, the gigantic pressure makes acrylic, which is rigid at the surface, begin to flow like a very thick liquid. Altitude from the seabed is now 3,000 meters. To reach full ocean depth took the Trieste four hours and 47 minutes. In 2012, James Cameron took two hours and 37 minutes. Depth, 9,900 meters. What was that? It was the sound of an implosion that Jacques and I heard in the Trieste. We didn't know what had caused it, but because we were still alive, all of our instrumentation and devices seemed to be reading correctly. We concluded that it couldn't have been too serious, so we decided to continue the dive down to the sea floor. Just before we landed, Jacques reported seeing a flatfish scientists at the time believed it might have been a sea cucumber and of course since Jacques and I were both engineers and not marine scientists we couldn't argue with that that scientists are now finding high order marine vertebrates like a flatfish at depths down to 8,500 meters so I'm hopeful that somebody will finally find one at 11,000 meters depth 10,994 meters we have now reached full ocean depth and are on the bottom We've kicked up a cloud of bottom sediment. The sediment at this great depth is called a diatomaceous ooze, which is a fancy word for the skeletal matter of diatoms, which is essentially pure glass. After 1960, we turned our eyes towards space, and Project Necton was largely forgotten. Today, the deep ocean remains the last great unknown frontier on our planet. And so as we consider recolonizing the moon or colonizing Mars, we have to remember 
that very little of the planet that we live on, this large manned satellite we call planet Earth, only 10% of the world ocean has been adequately explored. 